This is blog, blog the art blog. A discussion of taboo, controversial, and singular topics. I am the keeper, David J. Landry. Christmas episode. This season is all about celebrating when the great artist who created all things trusted his most prized artwork so much that he made himself into a helpless little infant and put his life into our hands. But how did the great artist create the universe? Doesn't all carbon dating and celestial observation discredit the idea of a sixth Earth Day creation? Wouldn't an artist working on a universal scale need to break the laws of thermodynamics in order to create matter as his artwork? Well, possibly not if he used an artistic tool called an ether. So what is an ether? That's a great question. The idea of an ether is somewhat faith-based scientific theory. Most scientific theories can be proven either through mathematical formulas or by observing their effects on other matter. The idea of an ether, on the other hand, cannot be proven through these traditional means because in layman's terms, an ether is another dimension. It's a dimension that exists parallel to the tangible dimension that we live in, and it allows for the laws of science to be broken in that dimension without affecting the ones that hold and bind this tangible world together with. So its effects cannot be observed on this side. They can only be experienced inside the ether. So you can't prove it. You can only be there experiencing it from that side. When the great artist needed to break the laws of science, he would then need to use a tool that allowed him to do that without breaking the laws of science here. Hence, he might have used the artistic tool of the ether. Because inside of this dimension, matter can be created and destroyed, and infinite amounts of energy can be sustained for infinite amounts of time. Because time itself doesn't exist because neither does motion. The ether is everything and it is nothing. It contains the building blocks of the universe, but no substance. So, if you needed to create a living world with creatures and plants and animals, this beautiful creation of art, but you only had 144 hours to do it, you would need to use an ether. You could create new forms of matter and turn blank stillness into substance in motion. You could create plant and animal life and within seconds watch the diverse variety that populates a planet. And yet, on the tangible side, no scientific laws have been broken, and millions of years have passed by. The plants and animals have spread out and populated the Earth in a very natural, evolutionary way on the observable plane. Meanwhile, in the ether, only days have passed by, and all of the nurturing was manipulated and controlled by the artist. Pretty wild, right? But what does that mean for us, the artwork? Well, there have been theories by people like Nikola Tesla that have stated that the ether is attainable. That with enough understanding and technical know-how, one day we, the artwork, will enter into the ether just like we now are able to enter into outer space and become the artist. Just like 
we were created in the likeness of the artist, we too will possibly one day create art at a celestial scale. We will be able to create and destroy matter. We will be able to break the boundaries of time and motion, all without breaking a single law of thermodynamics. Someday, we may be able to manipulate entire planets and create amazingly gigantic art just as easily as we now draw on pieces of paper with a pencil. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Have a great holiday break. Blog blog is going to take a short break as well, and I'll be back next year with uh, some whole new surprises, possibly some uh, guest appearances by other artists.